I'm Cape Jewel, and this next great comic book video has been brought to you by the good folks over at Trendy Butler. They dressed me for today's show, and they can dress you too every month. Do you want to get a great deal on fashionable men's clothes, grow your wardrobe, and take all the hassle out of shopping for it? Well, Trendy Butler can help you. I have a link down in the description, and starting now, I also have a nice promo code. Use that, and you can get yourself a sweet discount. Thanks to me, your old pal, Cape Jewel. And with that, let's hop on into the newest video, which is... We are taking a closer look at Batman White Knight issue number 7. To defeat the Neo Joker, Jack Napier is going to have to get back in touch with his dark side. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop on in together and find out. So, picking up from where the last issue left off, the Neo Joker has made her demands clear. She wants the Joker to be delivered to her or else she's going to use the giant freeze cannon to put the entire city of Gotham in the deep freeze. Jack Napier's options are limited at the moment as it seems that his medication that had granted him such sanity and clarity is now slowly but surely wearing off and he's beginning to go back and forth between his Napier persona and his Joker persona. Needless to say, he's in a hell of a Sophie's Choice situation right now. All he knows, though, is that he does want to do the right thing and does want to save Gotham. Interestingly enough, these recent turn of events have actually given Napier a hell of an insight into Batman. Now the shoe is on the other foot and he's forced to defend the city he loves from a monster he very well created. It's Harley who comes to Jack and says, that if he truly wants to beat the Neo Joker at her own game, he's going to have to do something she would never expect the Joker to do, and that is actually break bread with Batman. The Dark Knight is still currently locked up in Arkham. He could have tried breaking out any time, but he chose not to, feeling that this is pretty much how things were gonna go. He says that he'll work with Napier if it means saving Gotham City, but only on one condition. That is when the job is done, Jack turns himself in for all the wrongdoing he's committed. But wait, he thinks, I say I saved Gotham, I made it better, I exposed corruption, oh sure, I broke some laws along the way, stepped on some toes, and it, oh my god, I'm exactly like Batman now, aren't I? In fact, this idea kind of becomes the underlying theme of this entire issue, and that is while Jack Napier may have been a better man than the Joker at the end of the day, Jack Napier was ultimately not so different from Batman. It's here too in this issue we see that Jack Napier actually has a hell of a selfless streak to him. He doesn't want Harley Quinn to get in trouble for everything they did together, and Batman Batman agrees to let her go on the condition that he's willing to tell him what happened to Jason Todd all those years ago. It's here Sean Gordon Murphy kind of plays with this idea that the Joker persona is like a split personality for Jack and that by digging deep he can actually relive the memory of that night. On the upside, it turns out Jason is totally alive, but on the downside, it seems that he had abandoned Batman for not being able to save him. Ouch, that's rough, man, I tell you. Now, this very unlikely dynamic duo decides to recruit Mr. Freeze's help in getting rid of the big freeze gun. Unfortunately, Victor is still wallowing in self-hatred right now. He blames his father and himself for everything that's going on with the giant freeze weapon, and he hates the idea that Nora could wake up in a world where they're still haunted by the horrors of what happened to them in their past. Batman plays the comatose wife card by saying that this is the best time to fight his demons so that the world can be a little better when his wife wakes up. Freeze does manage to tell our heroes that his father and Thomas Wayne had built a series of tunnels deep under Gotham City to help transport materials for the Freeze Gun, and that's what the heroes are going to use to get close to the Neo Joker. This will be a joint venture between Batman and the members of the GTO. This does, however, provide the Dark Knight a chance to, well, surprise everyone by apologizing. You see, when Alfred passed away, he left Bruce a letter, a letter that he's far too afraid to read, and it really gave him perspective on what he's doing with his own surrogate kids, Dick and Barbara. He says that he hopes the time will never come that he needs to write them a letter. That he wants to tell them how much he loves them and how much he cares right now while he still can. Gordon, too, he says he doesn't blame for arresting him. He did go too far. And that when all of this is said and done, he does plan to step down and unmask as Batman. Wow, that's, that's pretty huge. The good guy roll out and plan for their two-pronged sneak attack. Everyone else is going to sneak through the tunnels while Jack Napier distracts the Neo-Joker by pretending to be the Joker. Only here's the thing, as the comic winds down, we find out he's not going to have a hard time pretending because he's transformed again. 
So that was Batman White Knight issue number 7 everybody, and once again this series does not fail. Hats off to Sean Gordon Murphy for everything he managed to accomplish in just a couple pages. Up until now I've been loving this series because it did such a great job turning the whole idea of Batman inside out and on its head, questioning a vigilante being able to operate with complete impunity. Here though they bring things full circle by saying that maybe Batman was always the good guy we believed him to be in our minds and perhaps the lines can be blurred when you're fighting against crime and that maybe Jack Napier and Batman just got off on the wrong foot and that they had more in common than they didn't. It's a hell of an emotional and story tightrope that this book manages to walk and it does so so expertly it just made my jaw drop and stay there until it was all over and it's still not over yet. From the stellar artwork to the character growth to the emotionally effective storytelling, I give this one a 10. This is one of the best issues in what is quickly becoming one of the best Batman series in a while. So that was White Knight, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, be sure to take a closer look at some of these other videos I've been working on. Then you can follow me on social media, at Cape Jill, so you always know what I'm doing next. And hey, if you're feeling in a particularly supportive mood, please check out my Patreon link down in the description. Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. And until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Joel. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again later. Bye-bye.